Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Unstoppable. I'm your host, Ralph Graves Jr. And today, today I have a, a gentleman by the name of Nate Palmer, and we've been talking off air, and the energy is is crazy already. Nate, welcome to the show, man. Ralph, dude, thank you so much for having me on. I'm so pumped to be on the Unstoppable podcast. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm good to have you here. Nate, tell, tell my audience what, what you do, and they'll, they'll get my excitement. So I am a fitness and nutrition expert. I generally work with like business owners and parents, anyone who I can help convince like, hey, there's a greater reason to work out than just having super sweet biceps. It's for your kids. It's for your wealth management. It's for your energy. I just love helping people like reach that understanding and really start pursuing excellence on a daily basis. So I use fitness and nutrition as like a means to an end that way. Yeah. And it's funny you should say that because when I was younger, fitness was all about my biceps. Um, now I, <laughs> I've gotten older, man. I'm understanding. Me and my wife talk about it all the time, incorporating the, the yoga. We understand, we, we're doing it now. Uh, uh, I, I tease the world and say I do it because I'm her trophy piece. But <laughs> actually, uh, we're, we're doing it to maintain a quality of life, man. Just yeah. a, a quality of life. And, and I mean, from the kitchen to, to, to the... Uh, to the to the fitness center, the weight room, wherever you choose to go. It's just it's about a quality of life, man. So good. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for doing what you do. Um, and uh, my listeners know I get excited when we talk fitness and health and wealth. And th this is uh, this is kind of kind of what I like to do. Hey, man, tell us your background. How'd you get started? So like, if you want to go like really way back, which let's just do it, you know, I told yeah. you I like to rant. So yeah, 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 yeah. So I didn't get into fitness as a like, cause I was an athlete or like, you know, played football in high school. I got into fitness because when I was like 11 or 12, my mom had left to take my sisters to school and my house got broken into. And okay. so I'm by myself in the house. Someone breaks the back window, comes uh. in the door. I grab a steak knife and I go hide in my room under my bed, just scared out of my mind. Right. Yeah, yeah. Got the steak knife, prepared to stab someone in the face. <laughs> and I hear this guy come down the hallway, like hardwood floors, just boom, boom with his work boots. Wow. And then he pounds on my door. And I was like, I'm going to die. Like, this is it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm good. I'm actually did not die. Spoiler right, alert. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But at that point, and I don't think I could have necessarily explained it as a 12 year old, but like at that point I was like, I don't ever want anyone to hurt me like this again. My yeah. world was already chaotic. My parents were getting a divorce. Like I, I was just like, yeah. I was kind of spinning yeah. and I was like, I need to have all the power I can have. Like I can't let someone take my autonomy get away again. So therefore the more beard muscles and neck tattoos I can have, the more <laughs> no one's ever going to be able to mess with me again. <laughs> yeah. And so that would kind of became my mentality. So I started working out, you know, I was like uh, 13 years old doing pushups in my room and stuff. I worked out so, so badly for like, like seven years, you know, all through high school, just doing the worst. Yeah. You know, I did biceps set like eight days a week. It was horrible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't yeah. touch a squat. Yeah. What's a leg day. <laughs> no, um, we got to do the leg day. bro. Yeah. yeah. So uh, then in college, I was getting a degree in business and I was like, this is so boring. I do not enjoy this process. So I started reading all the articles and like literature and magazines and everything I could get my hands on um, in terms of like fitness, muscle building, nutrition. I just dove in. I just was so excited about it. Just obsessed. So I got out of school and into the just the glorious job market that was 2009. I don't know if you remember that. Not a lot of people are yeah. like hiring 22 year olds at that point. <laughs> Right, like you must right. have 11 years of experience with this entry level position. And I was like, ah, yeah. I'll be a personal trainer until I figure it out. Right. So got into personal training at that point. Um, and that was always kind of like my, I'll do this until I figure out what I want to be when I grow up. But man, I love it. I love it. And it's been giving me so many amazing opportunities between being a personal trainer and getting a chance to talk with these people who are so far out of my league. Like I worked in Seattle. I was working with like entrepreneurs and business owners and C-level executives at Microsoft, people who I have no business speaking to. I used to tell people that like, hey, you have a problem. You like, you want me to solve the world's problems right now? I have all the people who can do that. I want to bring <laughs> them the problem. We'll talk it out. And then I'll come back to you with a solution. Like, like who has access like that? It was crazy. And then additionally, like I was able to kind of reinvent myself. I was able to like working on my own business. I started off in like 2015 going primarily as an online coach back like kind of early days with that. And then one day I was like, I'm going to promote myself to author. So I wrote two books and now I'm like, well, I'm going to be a podcast host. So I have a couple podcasts I've done. So it just yeah, gave me a lot of yeah. flexibility, ability to like 
pursue fun things, try to like help my clients in the way that best serves them yeah. without being yeah. like held to some sort of corporate structure. Man, it's amazing. Yeah, sure. Man, listen, and um, you do belong in those rooms. Your, your, your life, and I have to say this before we move on, every experience that you had prepared you for what you're doing today. You, you said you went and took business courses, but you still love this fitness thing and look where it has landed you. Um, you know, uh, I'm a, I'm, I'm, people know on, on this podcast, I pastor a church. I'm a Bible believer. I don't believe that anything is happenstance. Happenstance. I believe your order, your steps have been ordered and look at you now. You are valuable to those spaces that you're in because one of the things that you do is you teach nutrition as a way to really perform your at your best in the boardroom. A lot of us, a lot of us jump on nutrition because I want to, I want to, I want to, I, I, I ate this because I, I you know, I, I want to work out hard in the gym, but we forget, we forget that food and its nutrients and, and all those things are needed in our decision-making times, man. How mm. do you fuse that together? Let's talk about that, man. That, that's, that's one part of nutrition we miss. We, we love the weight loss. We love this. We love the anti-aging, but we forget our brain power is directly connected to our intake. Absolutely. I think that's really well put as well. I like to talk about how eating calories and having like specific calories is not necessarily just like food. It's like people talk about calories in versus calories out. I think calories yeah. are actually communication with your body. You're giving yourself an input signal, right? And whether that's, if that input is a Cinnabon, you're saying, hey, maybe it's time we should take a nap for the afternoon. Let's <laughs> chill out. Let's have a touch of the diabetes. Um, but if you're yeah, giving yourself yeah. like, like healthy, nutritious vegetables, really great quality meats, you're eating fruits, you're having like, you're having like really healthy, good foods. The inputs are telling your body, Hey, let's build muscle. Let's recover really well. Let's give your brain the energy it needs so you can eliminate decision fatigue at that two o'clock, three o'clock and, and yeah. get your work done. Cause like most people I've talking to have a to-do list, right? I don't know if you have one by your desk, but always. Yeah, 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 I do. And like yeah. most of us are like, you know, in the afternoons we're dragging, you know, we ate two Popeye's spicy chicken sandwiches and now we're like, we're taking that two hours of work and we're cramming it into four hours. So it's like when you can now take those, like get that mental fatigue out and you feel good all the time and you're getting your work done fast, like what, what else do you love to do? Because most people don't love Bulgarian split squats, Ralph, but like, I got to kind of convince them that they're, they're good. But like most people love to be with their families. Most people love to make money. Most people love to go out and like do adventures and have fun. So by using fitness as a way and nutrition as a way of like getting closer to those actual goals people have, if we can connect that dot, I think it becomes so much easier to sustain rather than being like, I want to lose five pounds. I want to be skinny. You hit that, yeah. you check that box and then you're out, right? That's why brides yeah. are the hardest clients. They're perfect yeah. to the wedding, and then they're gone. They're in the wind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, man, we, we really have to move past just the uh, I'm doing this because I want to look a certain way. I want to live a certain way. I want to be able to – I want to be able to do – wild things in my late 70s and early 80s. And I know it's really directly connected to uh, what I'm eating and my input, not eating and reading and resting and, and training. No, I don't like Bulgarian split squats, but I do like what they allow me to do. You know, <laughs> I, I feel that. I feel yeah, that. You yeah, can do those today yeah. at the gym? What's that? No, no. Today is uh, today is, is shoulders, shoulders and, and, and Eastern block workouts, right? Okay. All right. All right. We'll talk Russian about twist, that. Romanian deadlift, Bulgarian split squat. Let's just get that. The, the, the holy trinity okay. of Eastern uh, yeah, block. All right, yeah, well, well, I, see, <laughs> to do those, when I walk in the gym, I have to say, okay, Ralph, eat the frog first. Eat the frog. Eat the frog. I have to do those first. Yeah. If I don't do them first, I'm not doing them. <laughs> are you going to do your cardio first or are you going to do your strength first today? You know, um, I've heard various, and I've been doing this a long time, I heard various rules of thought, but today, because of my mindset today, I'm, I'm going to train, I'm going, I'm going to hit the weights first because, uh, and that, that's just how I'm a roll today. Now I could be totally against, you know, uh, friends of mine even tell me the, the, the treadmill and those things are bad for, for your, uh, for, for, for your system. And I, I know, I know, but today in the time I have, this is what we're going to do. All right. You want me to, <laughs> want, me to, want me to clear that up for you? Sure. All right. So when it comes to weight loss, if you got a lot of weight to lose, you're going to want to do your cardio first. 
Yeah. Because yeah. what's going to happen is you're going to raise your heart rate doing your cardio. And then everything you do after that, you're never going to get your heart rate back down. So you're going to burn a larger amount of calories in general. If you got, so like, that's like, if you have 40 plus pounds to lose and your, your goal is fat loss, you want to hit your cardio first. If you don't, if that's not the goal, or if you have like under 40 pounds to lose, generally you want to do your weights first because that you're going to have more energy, more ATP to hit those, lift those heavier weights, to create more muscle damage to, to be able to be more focused. You know, you ever like, you're to get to the, like the end of your set and you've already done cardio and it's the last workout and you're like thinking about Enya or something like that. And you're doing your exercises yeah, yeah. and you just, you're somewhere else completely. Yeah, that's not conducive to building a lot of muscle and, and really like right. getting to those results. So most of the time we want to be hitting our weights first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for clearing that up. I hope you guys paid attention to that. If you want to lose weight, get the cardio. If you got 40 pounds plus to lose, don't be afraid to do the cardio first. All right. And the other way around, if you want to build muscle, then you, you do the, uh, the weightlifting first. Yeah. 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 Thanks for clearing that up, man. See, I, I know we, we were going to connect on here. Um, what and now? Uh, I know my answer to this question. It's not the right scientific answer. <laughs> What's the secret to weight loss? <laughs> I got a I got a buddy of mine, man. He's an African guy, man. I love him. He tells me he's on the African diet, and I said, "What's that?" He said, "I don't eat." <laughs> <laughs> and when I tell you he looks great, oh, he looks fantastic, you know. <laughs> but what's your secret to weight loss? Yeah, that's a great question. So I, I don't necessarily believe that like a lot of diets are super sustainable. I like, you know, I like paleo, I like keto, but a lot of times those things are not going to work for most people long-term. So rather than thinking in terms of, oh, is this healthy or how should I eat this? Figure out a framework for how you should eat. So when I talk, when I have my book, The Million Dollar Body Method, I wrote this out into, I call them seven daily investments and this, and three of the seven are your meals. So it's like four other things. So it's for breakfast, you're having a protein and a fat, okay? The reason for that is that when you're having limited carbohydrates in the beginning of the day, you are helping your body become more fat adapted. So your body's going to be able to pull from stored fat. I worked as a bus boy at Albertsons uh, because and when I was 17 because I had crashed my friend's car into my other friend's car. That's a, that's a whole thing. But like when one of my jobs was restocking the milk, right? And so you, when you go and you're shopping and you grab a milk out of the front, I don't come along and take the new milk and put it back in the front, right? Because then we have all the old milk just sits back there and gets old. And that's not a, that's not a good like space for non-stinky dairy. So what we do is we tell them we put the milk in the back, you right? Put the milk in the back. But the same way we like, that's what happens when we eat carbohydrates. We're signaling to our body, here's gas, here's gas for the engine. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Your body's always going to want to burn carbohydrates. So over fat. So you have to give it a reason to burn the fats. And that's by eliminating some of the carbohydrates, especially early in the day. So breakfast, proteins, and fats, great way to start the day. High satiety, fat adaptation. It's awesome. For lunch, let's have a protein, fat, and a veggie. Okay. Keep uh, some veggies in there. Like what you're thinking, like a, just a big salad. Perfect. I, you know what? Bing, ding, ding, ding. I just had that. Just had that. Just exactly what you just said. I, just I, had I knew we were on the same wavelength, Rob. <laughs> and then dinner. Let's take dinner. And now you've done all your activity for the day. You've been walking around. You've been working. You've been on podcasts. You've done your workouts. Now let's throw our carbohydrates in the PM. Two reasons for that. Number one is recovery because you've taken out all the glycogen, all your like all the, the carbohydrate energy source that your body uses, let's replace them in the muscles rather than storing them as fat. So you're giving your body an idea of like, hey, where do you put this stuff that we can actually use it? And then a higher carbohydrate meal in the PM is gonna help you sleep deeper. A lot of studies show that like just having a higher amount of carbs, whether that's fruits or rice or potatoes at night, when you haven't had them all day, is gonna facilitate a deeper night's sleep. So this isn't the framework that I use because, right, you can take this now and be like, all right, I'm gonna have a burger the patty is the protein, the, the, like the bun is the carbs, and I have some tomatoes and pickles. Great. You hit it. You did the thing, right? You can have pasta, you know, have a little bit of meat, have some pasta, have some spaghetti sauce. I don't know. Like you can now take this and turn it into your type of whatever foods you like. Because if, if, so, if someone's like, hey, you can only eat this, this, and this, and you have to eliminate all these things that you like. I always think like, what is the possibility of me never eating an Oreo again? If you told me that 
can't ever have Oreo again. I was like, zero yeah, percent chance yeah, that's how yeah, to happen. Zero percent chance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what is the percent chance that I can follow a framework that gives me flexibility? And if I want to have an Oreo, I would just have proteins, Oreos, and vegetables for dinner. Well, I had 10 out of 10, hundred percent chance I could do that on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. So thinking about not necessarily like how it's going to get me skinny today, but like, how can I maintain this for the rest of my life? Start eating the way you're going to continue eating rather than doing some sort of crash diet. I'm also a big fan of fasting. I love, it. I love it, man. I love it. You have to tell the story, and I'm going to get into some of your background, but you got so many fascinating stories. And we're going to talk about the book that you wrote. We're going to talk about, I, I love, I love, and for those of you, you might see this on YouTube or somewhere. I love the poster behind you, Deadness Rodman stretched completely out. You know, he was a monster. But you have to tell the story about um, your keto experience. Uh, you, you talked about all the oil you put in your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like so I'm kind of I've kind of been a, a, a traditionally a keto hater, all right? And yeah. so I was I actually uh bought a new podcast, well it's, it's new to me called The Low Carb Hustle, which okay. talks to a lot of people who are keto or who are carnivore. And so okay. as kind of someone who's been like, "Eh, I'm down on that." One of the previous owners is wrote a book called Ketogenic Bodybuilding, and he's like, "You should go keto." And I was like, "Okay, okay. let's like Let's try it out. Let's test. Okay. I got my I got my uh, like blood panels done before. Got them done afterwards. Test body fat and everything after before and afterwards. Um, and so I did it for thirty days. And I don't think it's thirty days is long enough to necessarily become like completely adapted to the point yeah. where like everything is perfect. But it gave me enough chance to see like what it's all about and how to, how do people eat. And I feel like there's a lot of meat. I was eating like two pounds of red meat a day. It was crazy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but at okay. the end of the day, like at night, you know, normally I had like a, you know, I'd have like a piece of like some cereal, a piece of fruit at night, you know, yeah. kind of after dinner. So at night I'm having these things called a keto brick, which is a thousand calorie brick. Um, <laughs> it's like made of cocoa butter. It's got like 18 grams of protein in it. And so I'm like having half of one of these and like washing it down with heavy cream being like, Hmm, health. Oh, That's how oh it feels. Gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And not to say yeah. you have to do that, but like that falls very clearly in the keto boundaries. And no one, like, I'm not going to go to a dietitian or someone and be like, is this healthy? Because they're going to be like, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you gotta talk to talk to us real fast. Um, if you will, we all know that the sugar is a killer, man. Like we don't, we don't have it in our house. I, I you know, for a, a plethora of reasons, we don't have it here. But but talk to us about um, and it took a while. You know, we, we you know, we had to detox. It took us a little while before we got in tune with honey and agave and things like that. But 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 how do how would a person know if they need to detox from sugar? Yeah, great question. So I really think that sugar is found in a lot of things. Right, You mentioned honey and agave. I don't really distinguish because on the molecular level, they break down to the same thing. They both same turn thing, into glycogen yeah. in your body. Yeah. The same with like white bread, the same with pasta, like all that stuff is what I would consider to be kind of a sugar. Yes. And so if you're having this on a regular basis, you're, especially if you're having it early in the day and you start feeling like, let's say you eat a pop tart for breakfast, you eat a waffle for breakfast and then like 10 o'clock comes and you're like, man, I'm a little hungry. Like that's a sign that you probably have had too much sugar. 10 gotcha. o'clock, 10 30 comes and you're gotcha. like, man, I can go for a little bit of a nap right now. Two o'clock, yeah. tired again, hungry again, right after, right at two o'clock, hungry wow. again after work, hungry again after dinner. You're in the fridge looking for stuff. You know, like, you know what I'm talking about? You go in the fridge four yeah. times. Every time your yeah. standards get a little bit lower. Yeah. And then all of a sudden yeah. you're like, I guess I'll settle for these like three old grapes and like a slice of cheese, but not all yeah. the cheese yeah. because there's a little mold on it. It's been sitting in the back. Yeah. So, yeah, I, so I cut off, I, I'll, I'll eat the back part of it, not the front that has the mold. I eat the that's back right. part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when you, if you're experiencing any of those symptoms, whether it's like fatigue during the day or hunger cravings, those are your body talking to you against communication. And the reason for that is that there's a lot of bacteria in our stomach that feeds on sugar. And if we feed that, it grows, right? Just like everything else. And so when it grows, when that bacteria grows, when visceral fat around your stomach grows, it gets a direct line to your brain. So it can send out these signals of a hormone called ghrelin and ghrelin is a hunger hormone. So even though you're not necessarily hungry, you don't need any food. You like, you're not going to starve to death between, you know, 8 AM and 12 PM. Your, your body's like, yo, can we get some of that? Can we get some of that nice sugar? And you're like, I guess we could have some. And so then you have 
you know, like half of a donut, right? Being good, you have half, right? Rather than having like 14 blueberries, you have half a donut. And then all of a sudden, what's happening is our blood sugar and our insulin levels are going crazy. The blood sugar rises, insulin goes up to meet it. Now it's down, now it's crashing, now you're tired again. So you eat something, it spikes back up, that goes back, the insulin levels go. And so all day long, you're just like up and down, up and down with your energy. That's why I kind of went and talked about the proteins and the fats in the morning. That gives you this nice, smooth blood sugar all day rather than fighting these gigantic swings, which can make a huge difference in your energy, your emotional health, your mental state. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, um, you know, I'm the guy now I'm, I'm what old am I? I'm 54 now. I can't say old am I. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm at the doctor every year just because I want to catch anything that could come down the pike. I think, you know, if you got insurance and I'm blessed with great insurance, use it. So I show up. My my sugar levels, I, I love this this term, and I, I think it's just a term to get you on meds. Pre-diabetic, right? But you know, oh You're, pre-diabetic. I'm like, well, I'm pre-everything, you know that, right? <laughs> so um <laughs> so I just said, okay, I that's when I just I just stopped putting sugar in my coffee. I go back the next year, man, your sugars have dropped immensely. It's something simple as that. I just stopped putting sugar in my just drink it black from now on. You know, it's not just that hard either, huh? No, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's just just little things that we can control before we have to get medicated. I don't want to be medicated. No, diabetes is completely reversible. High cholesterol yeah. is not like is not a is not something that we need to be complete like medicating and over medicating the entire country on statins, right? Yeah. These things are all reversible with the correct diet and lifestyle choices. And I love what you yeah. said. It's a small choice, right? Not putting small. your sugar in your coffee today costs you nothing. Right. Not doing it for 10 years in a row, yeah. man, now you're talking about a snowball effect, right? Yeah. And I think all of our health is like this. You know, everyone wants to make it this big, grandiose thing. I'm going to go to the gym, Ralph. I'm going to go seven days per week. I'm going to get lean. <laughs> I'm going to get huge. Yeah. I'm going to train for a marathon. Yeah. I'm, but I yoga, yeah. right? Got a flexibility. So I got to hit yoga four times per week. All right, now I'm in 11 workouts. And we start making these yeah. gigantic, big steps when in reality, it's these little, tiny baby steps that we can keep doing. Not, not only are they going to be yeah. more sustainable and help you get great results over time, but they also build this self-esteem muscle. And a lot of people don't even realize yeah. this is a huge yeah. part of fitness and getting in shape and changing your body. It's a self-esteem. It's a self-confidence issue for a lot of us because so many times January yeah. comes around, new year, new me, right? This is the year. This is the year I'm doing it. Yeah. And then we don't. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to the gym on Monday and we don't. And we don't. And our subconscious, what, is that, what does our subconscious yeah. think of us when we're doing that? What do we think of ourselves? We think we're liars. Yeah, yeah. We don't buy it. Yeah. So then you're like, all right, I'm doing this. And, you're, and your subconscious is like, no, why would this be any different? And so we have to rebuild that right. muscle. Right. We got to rebuild it from the ground up. Yeah. Little baby steps. Take the, co the sugar out of your coffee. Go for a five-minute walk. Drink a glass of water in the morning. Have a protein shake. Hit the, hit the, like the breakfast. You know, like whatever those little yeah. steps are, those esteemable actions that we pat ourselves on the back and go, yes, you did it. Yeah. And then your subconscious yeah. gets on board. It's like, all right, I'm getting in shape this year. It's like, yeah, you are. You can do anything you want to. You got anything this. you want. It's just showing up consistently little steps. Yes. Show up. Just show up. Just show up. You know, talk to us real, real fast, man, and, and about um, insulin resistance. I need my audience to understand this. I'm big on this. Um, my, my dad had some uh, diabetic issues. You know, he he lived to be 83, 84, but his quality of life diminished because of diabetes. What is insulin resistance and how is it killing us slowly? Again, it doesn't happen overnight. Talk to us and share with us insulin resistance and how it begins to kill us slowly. So insulin resistance is kind of what you mentioned earlier. When you went to the doctor and they said you're pre-diabetic, it means that your A1C levels are 4.6 or higher. So what's happening at that at that level, and we kind of have designated the 4.6 number for some reason, is your body is not using blood sugar and insulin properly. So I kind of okay. was giving the example earlier, you have a like a Pop-Tart. Well, normally right. what should happen is if you are insulin sensitive, even if you have a Pop-Tart, your blood sugar comes up, your insulin rises to meet it, it drops them down together. Insulin's a key. It takes a key and it opens your muscles and puts the sugar inside and it's like, great, see you a little later. So, yeah. but if we have now, what's happening is now we get to the point where our blood sugar goes up and our insulin goes a little too high, right? Goes yeah. down, but now we got insulin. So our body's like, we're out of whack. We need some sugar, right? That's that craving yeah. we get. 
And so all day long, now we eat the Pop-Tart, goes back up, that's down. And so we're never in balance. So we're always feeling tired. That's why a lot of people will go on a keto diet or a low carb diet and be like, oh my God, I feel so good right now. I feel like I've had the flu for the last five years is just because they are just living in this state of constant like energy flux. So their body is not using blood sugar and insulin properly. So being insulin resistant, you can tell this, like if you're a man, you have a size 40 waist. If you're a lady of a size 35 waist or higher, you're insulin resistant, period. If you want to check this out yourself and you're like, I'm not totally sure. Take a weight, take a waist measurement at your belly button, at your narrowest part. Okay. Cause we're checking yeah. for visceral fat and then divide that number in inches by your height in inches. And if that number is higher than 0.47, you have some degree of insulin resistance. It's not binary. It's a sliding scale, right? Yeah. But we want to be, we want our waist to height ratio to be 0.46 or under. Gotcha. To really ensure our body is processing carbohydrates at the at the at the, like the very best we can. Gotcha. Because until gotcha. you get to that point, your body just wants to hoard carbohydrates. It doesn't want to burn them off. It's not yeah. trying. So you're never going to really get past the carbohydrates to the fat. I always think of it as like, like I, my daughter just turned four today, Ralph. So you know, and oh, I congratulations, a, happy birthday to her. Thank you. Yeah, I got a son who's about uh, almost a year and a half. And okay. I can be a really bad parent at times because my daughter is doing can. something and she's like, she's freaking out. She just wants to do something else. And I'm like, no, you got to do it my way. And, you know, I'm trying to be like authoritarian yeah. dad. And yeah. what does she do? Yeah. She flies off the handle. She's screaming. My son's now crying. Everyone's upset at me because I wanted to do it this way. I wanted to go like, like take, go, to, sure. go to war, right? With my kids for sure. some, because I'm, cause I'm, yeah. No, I'm slow. My <laughs> wife's amazing though. My wife is incredible. So she goes, she doesn't go, Hey, you got to do it my way. She goes, Hey, have you seen this cool thing over here? And completely redirects them. Now my kids are like, what are you doing? I want to be a part of that. Like, what's that cool thing mom's got going on? So she's amazing. Insulin resistance can kind of be similar to that in the fact that we are insulin resistant and we're like, you better lose weight, diet and exercise. And then we're just just white knuckling and it's motivation. And then we look, we look at ourselves in the mirror. We go, I failed. I suck. I can't do it. But it's not necessarily, you just took the wrong approach. You did not give your body any reason. You didn't distract it and say, Hey, here's the, here's the other opportunity. Here's the other option. So we've got to give our body a reason to burn fat. Just like, you know, you give your toddler a reason to make a new choice. Yeah. Yeah. I like that analogy, man, because some people just, you know, this whole, you know, you say the word diet. I hate the word. I hate the word diet. I hate the word diet. I just, just I hate the word diet. It's just a way of eating. That's all I say. Just, just change your eating habits. But the words diet and exercise. Listen, I've been chasing the kids all day. That's exercise, as far as I'm concerned. That's what some people say. <laughs> you, you know, I've been chasing kids all day. You know, um, but no one wants to be um, sick or sickly. Everybody wants to be healthy. So how do I, everybody can't be Ralph, everybody can't be Nate, everybody can't be self-motivated, everybody can't do that. Uh, How do they, what is your suggestion as personal trainer, as a businessman, as an author who wrote uh, uh, the million dollar, what's it called, the million dollar body? Method, nice. Method, thank you, the million dollar body method, go out and get it today. How, How do you, how do you, what what are some of the steps for me? I'm a mom. I'm a corporate guy. I've been in the office all day. I'm not trying to come home. If I don't get up at three o'clock in the morning and do it, I'm not coming home to do it. So so what are some, but I want to be healthy. I want to be healthy. So what do you say? What do you say to, to moms and, and dads and things like that? Like at the end of the day, like, you know, if it's, if it's a priority, you're going to make time for something, you know, like the average American watches three and a half hours of television every night, you know, say like, it, say it, say it. So like, say it. so I'd rather someone say, Hey, listen, that's not a priority for me right now that like get that good. No, that's a good. No, great. That's not a priority for me right now. I got too much on my plate. It's fuller than I want it to be. All right. Perfect. Then to say, I want to do it. I just don't have time because when we continue to put the onus, the limitations, the excuse, the, the blame on something outside of our control, the time fairy is not showing up. Ralph and being like, here you go. Get some yeah. more time yeah. in your life. Right. If it's yeah. a priority, we make time for things. Okay. Because so in the reality of it, we have time. We have time. We have time. We can we do something. Time. Yeah. And yeah. like, and to give up our power to some external source, whether that's time or energy or something else like that, it's disempowering for us. It steals our autonomy. 
So like that's first thing is you is you you have time or it's not a priority. Those are your only two options. Next thing is you don't need to be hitting the gym for 90 minutes a day to get results. You can do a 15 quick, like quick workout with dumbbells. That's way better than the alternative of zero. I got a lot of clients who don't work out at all. All they do is walk and use the diet. Use the diet as weight loss. Workouts are not weight loss. Workouts are, workouts are becoming more, becoming better. Women get preyed on all the time in the fitness industry because they use words like lose, drop, <laughs> like, you know, like everything is like drop fat, lose weight, decrease your, like we all trying to put women in a box and make them smaller, right? Men were over here like, let's get pumped up. Let's get huge. You know, we kind of understand that working out, that exercise makes us greater. It makes us more. We become more powerful. So when we started thinking about our workouts as a way of getting better, it's about showing up bigger for our kids. It's about modeling them in the communities that we're a part of, that leadership, being the paragon, being the example. That's what workouts are for. Your nutrition dictates all that fat loss. And you got to eat three meals a day anyways, probably. Some of us are eating eight meals a day. Yeah. So you have time. You have time. This is good stuff, man. I, I, I really appreciate what you're doing, man. How can my audience find you? Where's your podcast? I, they're going to run out and get the million dollar uh, body method. They're going to run out and get that. Um, where, where can they find you, man? Man, check out the Low Carb Hustle podcast. Uh, we got some, some really cool episodes coming out in the next couple of weeks right now. Just dropped a hot one with a guy named Rob Wolf that I'm so pumped about. He was crazy. He's a crazy guy. Um, but you can find me the book on Amazon, or if you want to just grab a copy, I, I'll send your audience an ebook for free. Uh, you can just go to getnatesbook.com to check that out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, then, you need to send me a book. So I need to, uh, I'm going to buy the book. Don't send me anything free. I believe in support in business. I'm going to go, guys, I know you can get it free, but go support this man and what he's doing. Being an author, that's cool. We can send you free books, but we really like when you buy our book. He's being <laughs> modest, but I'm, go on Amazon and buy the book. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate thank the you plug. For, for coming along there. Man, yeah, yeah. Listen, man, I respect what you're doing. I love what you're doing. I love the energy. Will you come back again? Because I do have some other questions for you, man. Will you come back on the program? For sure. Yeah, this has been fun, man. You have some I great questions. It, man. You. Yeah, yeah. And you let man, me rant. We- I appreciate that, too. <laughs> <laughs> listen, thank you for being on the Unstoppable Podcast. Guys, I hope you really paid attention. Oh, before we go, tell them what we talked about before we taped, before our pre-taping. You gave me, you said, hey, Ralph, when you go to the gym today, try this on the treadmill. You'll love it. After you, after you do your shoulders, it's 30 minutes on the trip. Tell them what you told me. Jared, so, wait, drop this nugget. Ralph, you had, you had committed to me to every single day for the next month doing an hour worth of cardio and then Bulgarian split squats. Like, yeah. I appreciate that. That's I mean, uh, me. no, I did not. I did not. I, I set out, I, I skipped the Bulgarian split squad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I must have misheard. I get, I get confused sometimes. I was, like I said, um, right, I so, so we were talking yeah. about cardio. We were talking about like what kind of cardio you're doing. And I was explaining that like one of the types of cardio that I've been loving recently personally, but also for a lot of clients, because like my, my theory around cardio is that it doesn't have to be like, it doesn't have to be anything special, right? You don't have to row every single time. You don't have to do stairs every single time. In fact, what we want our cardio to do because we're stressed, we're highly stressed. We're living in a stressful culture, a stressful time. Our work is stressful. Our commute is stressful. Our kids are stressful. You know, like all these things are stress, 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 stress. And then workouts that's stressful too. Then you add like a hit class or like a spin class on top of that. That's like more stress. So how can we control that stress, bring that back down. Well, one of the best ways to do that is by walking. Walking is a huge stress reliever. I feel like it puts, puts money back into your, like back into your pocket, basically where, you know, like working out costs, hit class costs. So the, the, like walking pays you. And so we can do that. But most of us like, okay, I've been walking. It wasn't hard. No big deal. But here's a way you can do it. Build a little bit of muscle in your posterior chain, your calves, your hamstrings, your glutes, Get paid, sweat a lot, leave the gym feeling amazing. I call it 30, 15, three. All it is, is 30 minutes on the treadmill at a 15 incline. Some treadmills only go to like 10 or 12. That's fine too. And then a three speed. Once you can do that without touching the sides the entire time, we'll add a weight vest on. But that is one of the greatest forms of cardio because it will not beat you up. It's not going to hurt you. It's going to pay you out and Man, I have to. I they, every time I go and do it, they throw the treadmill away when I'm done because I'm just sweating all over it. They have to get rid of the treadmill. I'm just kidding. They wow. don't do that. Wow. 
<laughs> I love that workout. I'm going to do it today when I get done lifting my weights. I'm going to do that, man. I'm going to commit to that and and, and definitely check that out. But guys, you've been li- listening to the Unstoppable Podcast and, and my, my guest today. And please share this with everyone. His name is Nate Palmer. Share it. Pass it along. And uh, let's continue to be unstoppable together. My name is Ralph Graves, and I'll see you next time. God bless.